Despite the well-known dangers of cave exploration, some people can't resist the thrill. They're drawn to the beauty of nature and are determined to witness it firsthand, not just through others' eyes. And let me be honest, I've told other cave diving horror stories, but our story today is by far the scariest. This is Fatal Tragedies with the story of Artur Konrad Kozlowski. The Polonora Cave Speaking of cave diving, one of these underground systems is the Polonora Cave, which has been graced by the presence of many cave divers and was greatly explored by a diver named Artur Kozlowski. The cave, situated in Kiltartan County, Galloway, Ireland, lies beneath a majestic beech tree on John Nolan's farmland. The cave holds a rich history, with the steps bearing imprints from a time when the community regularly fetched water from its well. The remarkable feature of Polonora Cave is its consistent water supply, even during dry seasons with minimal rainfall. The secret lies in the cave's limestone landscape, characterized by karst formations and underground streams that are more prone to flooding than drought. Approximately 196 feet north of Nolan's farmland is the entrance to Polonora Cave. Upon entering, one encounters a shaft that deposits thick layers of fine clay, covering the cave floor. Divers need to be cautious, as disturbing this area results in a complete loss of visibility and the settled particles take a considerable time to clear. The cave's roof is made up of boulder clay and loose rocks, creating a unique underground environment. While many shafts have been explored, indicating a significant length and depth, there are still numerous undiscovered mysteries waiting to be unveiled within the depths of Polonora Cave. Now, approaching the forbidden Polonora Caves was a big no-no, with locals always scared that the ground might just collapse if someone got too close. The cave had this mystical reputation because of the lurking danger inside. These caves were the leftovers of an ancient underground system filled with collapsed caves, water parts, and hidden caverns. Kozlowski caught wind of the Polonora Caves and got super interested in being the first to map them out entirely. But let me tell you what, it was risky business. Diving in those caves meant facing numerous dangers. Disorientation could hit if your dive line broke, or worse, if you didn't have one set up. Poisonous gas pockets lurked in the water-filled caves, and gas narcosis could mess with your head. Being deep underwater meant panicking was a real threat. A freaked out diver might grab your gear, rip off your dive mask, or kick up sediment, leaving you clueless about which way is up. And if your lights went kaput, well, you'd be trapped in the dark. Plus, you couldn't just swim to the surface if things went south. You had to navigate the same maze that took you deep into the cave. And don't forget, you're always running out of air. Despite all of these risks, the mysterious allure of the Polonora Caves had Artur Kozlowski hooked. Speaking of, here's a little of Artur Kozlowski's life. Artur Konrad Kozlowski, born on October 17, 1977, was a highly talented and dedicated cave explorer. Throughout his life, he achieved significant success by exploring new caves and connecting different cave systems, pushing the boundaries of cave diving depth in Great Britain and Ireland. In 2006, he made a remarkable dive, reaching a depth of 338 feet. Originally from Poznan, Poland, Artur relocated to Ireland, where he spent his final years before his passing in 2011. In Poland, he worked as a quantity surveyor and he continued his professional pursuits in his new environment. Notably, he contributed to projects such as the Aviva Stadium and Houston Square Developments in Dublin. Additionally, he played a role in compiling maps for Galway County Council and the National Roads Authority, particularly for the design and development of the M18 motorway. While he was already a qualified diver with 13 warm water dives under his belt before arriving in Ireland, his interest in underwater exploration reached new heights in the country. Despite his proficiency as an open water diver, he recognized the distinctive challenges of cave diving. 
understanding that it required a different set of skills than the graceful floating experienced in open waters. And caves have many awful tight turns, many of which are dark and challenging. The uncertainty of what lies beyond the next turn adds an element of mystery, requiring individuals to navigate and decipher the cave's secrets on their own. Venturing into uncharted territories within a cave is a journey toward potential discoveries, but it also entails engaging in perilous maneuvers. This is why cave diving demands a diver's exceptional training and skills. And so, what did he do? In 2007, recognizing the need for specialized training, he underwent cave dive training with Martin Farr, a renowned Welsh cave diver instructor widely regarded as one of the best in Ireland. To hone his skills, Arthur chose Hell Complex, a part of the Greenholes group of underwater sea caves located off Dolan, County Clare, as his training ground. This experience equipped him with the expertise required to navigate the intricate and challenging underwater cave systems. Artur's Discoveries and Achievements Upon commencing his cave diving endeavors shortly after completing his training, he delved into exploring and mapping previously undiscovered passages. His initial breakthrough came with the first traverse between Hell's Kitchen and Robertson's Cave near Reef Complex. He played a pivotal role in extending cave systems in both Ireland and Spain, leaving a lasting mark on the exploration landscape. One of his most noteworthy achievements was the extension of the Marble Arch Cave System in County Fermanagh. Artur's diving connections to Prad's Pot Cascades doubled the cave system's length from 2.7 miles to an impressive 6 miles. These connections were later linked to the newly established Monastery Sink Upper Cradle System, expanding its reach to 7.1 miles, making it the longest cave in Northern Ireland. He not only set records for the longest cave, but also established another milestone for the deepest cave in Great Britain and Ireland. Located in Plotomary, near Killa Valley, County Mayo, Ireland, this cave system reaches a depth of 338 feet. His achievements in cave exploration included navigating the challenging underwater passages of the Fort region, covering a distance of 6.2 miles. Additionally, he discovered and explored Palandro, the third deepest sump in Great Britain and Ireland, measuring 0.6 miles in length and reaching a depth of 269 feet. In recognition of his outstanding contributions to cave exploration, he received an award at the annual Polish Travel and Outdoor Sports event held in Gdynia in March of 2011. During a dive that tugged at his heart, on Sunday, September 4th, 2011, he found himself inside a cave, surrounded by loud rumbling. Anxious, he checked his gear, fearing a cave collapse or earthquakes. Terrified at the thought of being trapped, he listened closely and discovered it was just traffic noise from the road above. Artur, making strides in mapping the Planora cave system, had only three caves left. His mission was to connect Poldolin and Poltafil, tackling the most dangerous Planar 10. The success of this mission would prove a connection between the two caves. He believed forging the connection from Poltafil in 2009 would be easier. Leaving his dive line about a mile from the entrance, he entered Potterville. Additional ropes were set up at the surface for a possible retreat. Facing a powerful flow, he descended carefully to 69 feet, pausing at this unprecedented depth. Despite the heavy flow behind him, Artur, in control, knew the risks ahead. At that depth, a descending channel emerged. He reached 196 feet, but panic set in as his diving line broke. Descending further, he expected to see the large reel tied the year before. Instead, the line was loose, tied behind a small boulder. In this extremely scary situation, he attached a fresh reel, navigating a narrow and sharp passage. The passage rose, then descended across a level clean floor, revealing the unpredictable challenges of cave exploration. However, Arthur realized he was still moving in the right direction, having faith he was on the correct track. 
After two and a half years and 45 dives on both sides, he was shocked to discover the connection with Poldolin. Yet, the moment held a surprising emotion for him. Instead of elation, he felt sadness, perhaps because it was all over. After numerous challenging and exhausting dives with close calls, the link between Palafil and Poldolin was finally found, a significant achievement for Artur. However, he still had one more task, mapping out Planora 10 fully, the Demise Descent. With careful preparation, time, and multiple dives, Artur attempted this daunting task over a weekend. On Monday, September 5th in 2011, he went diving as usual, depositing stage oxygen bottles for decompression and emergencies. Knowing the risks, he made arrangements with friends to raise the alarm if he didn't return by 9 p.m. At 2 p.m., Artur went into the cave, telling his friends he'd be out by 5 p.m. Since it was a super rainy day, his pals chilled out while Artur explored underwater. But when 5 p.m. rolled around and he didn't show up, his friends got worried. Since they weren't expert divers, they reached out to their more experienced buddies, and soon the whole crew was on high alert. Entering Planora 10, Arthur had about six hours before needing to come out due to air limitations. He pushed himself through confined sections, swiftly moving toward his dream of fully mapping the cave. However, when he wasn't back by 5 p.m., concern grew among his friends, leading to the involvement of professional rescue divers. As news spread, media activity heightened in the local town. Specialist search and rescue teams from Ireland, Wales, and England joined the rescue attempt. Unfortunately, the hope of finding Artur alive diminished quickly due to the challenging cave conditions. Conflicting reports emerged, suggesting Artur had gone too far or that even if his body was found, bringing it to the surface might be impossible. Despite the uncertainty, they held on to the hope that Artur, experienced in handling close calls, would find a way to survive until supplemental oxygen could be delivered. Recovering Artur's Body The initial search was coordinated by Artur's friend, Jim Marnie who was devastated by the situation. The local town became a hive of media activity as everyone anxiously awaited news about Artur's fate. Jim, renowned as one of the area's most skilled divers, was seen as the person with the best chance of rescuing Artur. The devoted father risked his life, dropping everything to bring Artur back to his family. As a member of the Irish Cave Rescue Organization, Jim spent Monday night tirelessly searching for possible air pockets within the cave, where he thought Artur might be hiding. Despite the extreme danger, Jim conducted dive after dive, inspecting various areas of the cave. On Monday night, when hope seemed to dwindle, Jim discovered a dive line that Artur had set up, running the entire length of the cave. British cave divers Rick Stanton and John Bellathan, considered among the best in Europe, were called in to assist in the rescue mission due to their extensive experience and training in technical diving environments. Arriving in Ireland on Wednesday evening, over 48 hours since the initial alarm, they joined Jim inside the cave, diving down 1,200 feet without success. Simultaneously, Jim explored an unsearched part of the 800-meter white cave, about 52 meters deep. Connor McGrath of the Irish Cave Rescue Organization revealed the discovery of a large airspace halfway into the cave, providing hope that Artur might be inside. Another airspace near the surface added to their optimism. Locals, though aware of the cave's dangers, respected Artur's courage in taking on the challenging mission of mapping it. The skilled diver's decision to explore the cave was seen as an honor by the community. Tragically, Jim Warner found Arthur's body in an underwater passage around 6 p.m. on Wednesday. It took Jim an hour to dive into the narrow passage where Artur's body lay, fully equipped with oxygen tanks and a guide rope, just over a mile from the cave's entrance. Artur's situation was heart-wrenching as he couldn't find an air pocket with enough oxygen to survive. While being able to bring his body back to the surface and Jim's discovery provided some consolation, 
Artur was given the highest respect when his lifeless body was brought above ground. A doctor confirmed his demise, and he was taken to University College Hospital Galway for a post-mortem examination. However, the autopsy report contradicted the assumption of a lack of air, as he had sufficient supply for more than six hours, planning only a three-hour dive. When his body was recovered, all of his equipment remained intact and attached. So the question remains, what could have taken the life of an experienced diver? No one can tell. News of Artur's story spread throughout the nation, and when his passing was confirmed, the entire country mourned together. The realization that they would never see him again left everyone deeply saddened. His friends, devastated by his loss, paid tribute by creating a film about his life called Riders of the Storm, featuring footage from his own camera. The film was screened by the sub-aqua societies of Trinity College Dublin and University College Galway, earning a prestige award at a Polish film festival. Despite the inherent risks of cave diving, Artur remained passionately devoted to the sport until the very end. His unwavering commitment reflects a trait shared by many successful individuals, an undeterred pursuit of their passions, even in the face of death. Artur went beyond the limits set by his mentor, Martin Farr, the Welsh cave diving instructor. His legacy lives on in the cave diving community through his discoveries of new caves. While recognizing Artur's impact on his community and the world, the Irish Speleotology planned a memorial for him in August 2012 to be held in Polonora Cave. Artur's contributions made him a true hero in the eyes of the Kiltartan community his friends, and his family. And in 2013, a fundraising page was created to collect funds for a headstone for Kozlowski's grave in Kiltartan and a plaque at the entrance to Polonora 10. The engraving of the plaque and headstone was done by a stonemason based in Gort on September 6, 2014, marking the third anniversary of Kozlowski's passing. Friends and family gathered for the unveiling of the gravestone and plaque. Thanks for joining us on this mesmerizing journey into the world of cave exploration and the remarkable life of Artur Kozlowski. What could have possibly led to the untimely end of this experienced cave diver? Despite careful planning and adequate equipment, dive into the mystery with us by leaving your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for more fascinating stories. Until next time, keep exploring the unknown and remember, every cave has a story waiting to be discovered. What's yours?